Hey everyone, Hayden here. Happy Halloween season, and this October I'm doing the Horror and Hops Challenge. That's right, 31 nights, 31 scary movies, and 31 six packs of beer. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Miller Brewing Company, for providing the beer I'll be drinking every night while I watch a scary movie. Afterwards, I'll record my opinions and my thoughts on the film and kind of see how the progress goes. Pretty sure I'm going to get through this month a-okay. Let's see. Hey there, night one in the books. Watched The Thing by John Carpenter, and I'm feeling good, so I don't see why I can't keep this going for the whole month. Night two in the books, six pack in my belly, and I watched the first screen movie, one of my favorites, and uh, the beer was tasty. I could see myself doing this even beyond the uh, the bounds of October. I drank a six pack every night, so night number uh, three down, I watched the Chucky movies. They were really good. I really like the beer. Hey guys, it's uh, either night four or five. I can't really remember, but uh, watched Reanimator. Really great, really fun film. Night number six, watch The Shining. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Night seven. There was beer, there was no movie. Instead, I stood in the mirror and saw my future. On night eight, I will drink 18 beers, try to watch Videodrome, but get bored halfway through and begin scrolling through my phone. On night nine, I will have exactly 11 beers. I will watch the entirety of Donnie Darko twice. I will feel a great emptiness after. On night 10, I'll have exactly seven beers. I'll watch A Nightmare on Elm Street and have wonderful dreams after. On night 11, I'll drink 15 beers, nine of which I will shotgun. I will watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure. On night 12, I will drink 24 and a half beers. I'll watch Fright Night and not remember it in the morning. Um, so, next, night 13 of the challenge. Um, of course, had the 13th night, had to watch every single Friday the 13th movie. I, I switched to liquor for this one, and um, it was delicious, so I'll probably, I'll probably keep that up. I'll probably keep mixing it with the, the Millers um, that I've been supplied. Once again, though, by Miller High Life Brand Brewing Company, because this is a sponsored video. Yep. Night 14, I have developed the power to speak telepathically. I drank more beers than you could ever imagine. I watched all of human existence, all the tricks and all the treats. I forget what night it is, what time it is, what I've seen, what I've drank. Doesn't matter. Never did. Night 15, all I know is Miller. Night 17. Night 21, all I know is Miller. Night 22, night 23, night 24, beer, beer. Night 25, beer, 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 beer.
day 31. Happy Halloween, everybody. Throughout my adventures this month, through all the fear and all the movies, I discovered that the true horror that permeates everything is the past. In John Carpenter's Halloween, the past is an unstoppable force that hunts us down just for daring to approach it. It strips us of our innocence and traumatizes everyone it touches. It is faceless, it is ruthless, and most of all, it's got a big knife. In Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, we see how easy it is to get lost in a maze and become stuck in the past. It's an influencing force. It takes our selfish perspectives and fuels our fears and desires to manipulate us in claustrophobic obedience. The Overlook Hotel isn't haunted by witches, ghouls, or vampires. It's haunted by historical sins. Native Americans murdered to build the hotel, or the victims of the previous caretaker. For those stuck in the past, caring for objects outweighs any care for people, including family. The crime becomes history. The history becomes a footnote. And finally, in Part 8 of Twin Peaks The Return, David Lynch takes us back to 1945. With the detonation of the first atomic bomb, we witness the beginning of the evil that will seep into our world. The entire series is a long, surreal exploration of the true nature of good and evil. How does the past impact the present? What happens when we allow unchecked darkness to infiltrate our lives? What are the personal and interpersonal ramifications? Little by little, the good in our world is drowned out in a sea of trees and time. But the bomb evil is a massive, singular force, a chain reaction of all of mankind's flaws that soon wedges its way to widen the holes in our humanity. It spreads like a virus into the modern world, making the everyday as horrific as the supernatural. Even unwavering optimism cost our hero. For a long time, it hasn't been bad to be bad. Now it's not even good to be good. Perhaps the only way to get by is pure ignorance. What these pieces tell us is that the past will haunt you and push you into harmful cycles. It'll destroy you if you let it. It'll isolate you. It'll pierce you. It'll keep you from the future. So look toward that future. Look forward. Look inward. Look outward. Look to each other. Above all, look to Miller High Life.